Mummified remains of Ice Age animals are incredibly rare in the Yukon. There was something found while the, the mine workers was using one of these water cannons, hydraulic monitors, and was washing away the, the mud and um, hit from what seemed to be some frozen carcass of a, of a beast, uh, some Ice Age animal. So, I mean, the other day I came in the cut and the first thing I spotted was a mastodon tusk and I found the buffalo horn. I mean, Mike is on the bulldozers, we hadn't spotted them yet. And then I looked at that and then I looked across the cut and I thought, well, shit, there's no leather jackets in permafrost. So I scoot over there and yeah, sure as, sure as shit, there she was. You can go back to really the, the early days of, of the gold rush. So 1896, the major gold deposits were discovered in the, in the Klondike. Spurred on this like global gold rush. As soon as those gold miners started uh, digging through that frozen ground, they were shafting tunnels from above and they started finding the, the remains of Ice Age animals. So bones of woolly mammoths and bison and horses. And, and one of the things that always strikes me is seeing these awesome black and white photographs of gold miners, and they look like they're just exhausted because they've been <laughs> mining underground all winter, and then they, they're standing there with their woolly mammoth tusk. Well, the way, the way I got into mining is that when we came to Canada 35 years ago, you know, we started out on the farm, and they, didn't take very long to hear people talking, oh, people in the north, they make a thousand bucks a week. I thought, well, shit, milking cows is a thousand bucks a month. Of north, a thousand bucks a week. If people get that, I'll get some too. Took an instant liking to it, and basically never left. For the summers in the Yukon, yeah, that was it for me. So I kind of found my place, you know, so I kind of, yeah, yeah. We uh, have a lot of permafrost and we, we mine a lot of the pups, and then in the pups, like in the draws, we do find a lot of bones and a lot of crap. The site that Tony mines at on, on Paradise Hill has always been really important to us because um, it's one of the few sites in the Klondike that we know that has uh, uh, middle Pleistocene sediment, so it's, it's very old. We know of him because he's got this, you know, incredible, boisterous personality. And, so he, but he's also one of our, you know, kind of our biggest supporters out there too. There is part of his leg being scraped somewhere in here. This is all ice here. No, he's not gonna fit. It's too big. That's why I wondered if we want a blanket to lie it in the blanket. You got there. Here, let's see how this is gonna go. Okay, stay together, buddy. Okay. Oh, wow. That's just cool. <laughs> Ugh. It turned out to be after close inspection, it's a, a mummified carcass or partial carcass of an Ice Age caribou calf, so it's a baby caribou, and from the basic, like the torso, the the front limbs, the head are all preserved with skin and hair, and you can see the little antler buds. The first thing I wanted to do is to get out to the Paradise Hill locality, and there was a, a good chance we could find something like a, a volcanic ash bed that would help us be able to determine how old this animal is. I wonder when he actually gets that monitor going, if he's like blasting it at this side. Oh, 
Okay. You got it? Yeah. That was it. Just a little wisp? Yeah. Nice. This is gold here. Lo and behold, we found a, a volcanic ash bed uh, right where the, the carcass had emerged from the ground. So this is everything, you know, to find a, a carcass is one thing to be able to put it in geological context is, is huge. That's the, you know, a massive part of the story. When we learned that it was 80,000 years old, uh, definitely really exciting because uh, most um, Pleistocene mummified carcasses are actually quite young. They're usually 25 or 30 to 35,000 years old. Around 80,000 years ago was a real period of uh, transition. We had a lot of really strange animals that aren't the typical Ice Age animals. Short-faced uh, bears were there. We had uh, probably a few mastodons, a few ground sloths, maybe a few woolly mammoths, maybe a couple lions or scimitar cats. Earth's climate started to cool substantially. And by about 80,000 years ago, it's sort of a transition between really warm conditions and entering into a new glaciation. To have a, a confident age assignment because of the volcanic ash really makes this uh, caribou specimen very unique. So it could be the oldest um, mummified um, Ice Age carcass in, in the world. For the paleontologists, it would be a lot harder to come across that stuff if it wasn't for us monitoring. And when we really find the good species, it's not when we use all the big equipment. It is when we really use the water cannons and the water to do the work for us. That's when a lot of that stuff gets saved. We have to move the dirt anyway. If something shows up, yeah, work together. I think so. If there was no gold mining, or if gold miners stopped caring about paleontology, and paleontologists stopped caring about gold miners, a lot of scientists, a lot of labs around the world would have to go elsewhere to try to do some of this work. There's people from all continents that are working on Yukon specimens and doing different types of analyses, and none of them have been to the Yukon or have met a gold miner or driven a gravel road and got stuck in the muck. But those are the parts of the, the piece that make that happen, and, uh, and, I, and I love being a part of that.